What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Bruja Africana, coming to y'all with another reading in the series of the reparations versus the fall of the hip-hop gatekeepers. Now, this one isn't about a gatekeeper, but this is about a person who was taken advantage of by one of the gatekeepers. As by now, you all should know that I'm naming Diddy as one of the main gatekeepers in hip-hop. The rest of them will be named in their readings. This reading, though, is about Meek Mill and how Meek Mill felt like he was justified in participating in the acts with Diddy and giving himself to a situation sexually so that he can continue to get work in hip hop. Like now I know a lot of y'all are Meek fans and y'all will argue me up and down in this, but Meek's bars are really mid. He says some punchlines here and there and he says some shit sometimes, but he has never been that artist that, oh, I got to go out and buy his shit. That's what he wanted to overcome. Y'all know in the beginning of Meek's career, you know, people um, weren't really fucking with his music like that. So things had to change. So it feels like he's justified in sleeping with Diddy. And I'm skipping ahead, but I want to point out a thing to y'all. Look at this picture of these folks standing here. If this don't look like boyfriends to y'all, I don't know what to tell you. But let's get into what the boyfriend activity was. Meek is worried, you know, he's worried about, you know, his success now because he knows that hip hop is not ready to accept homosexuality for whatever reasons. Hip hop is the only genre of music that seems to think that heterosexual male is the way and slutty female is the only way you're going to be accepted into this community. So Meek is worried because he knows that to get some money, to get some status, to get some respect back after he had been arrested, put in jail, drugged by the um, judge that did him like that. And keep in mind, she was part of the plan, too, to break Meek so that he could open his ass up to Diddy. They had to break Meek first. So he's worried about the fact that people are going to find out and believe the things that are being said about his homosexual activities. And they are true because look at the way Meek is going off. He, he ain't shut up yet. He's afraid that those that fucked with him ain't going to fuck with him if they find out he was, you know, bent over a table for Diddy a couple times for some coin, you know. He's afraid that if motherfuckers find out that he might have sucked a little dick here and might have swallowed a little bit, you know, just to, you know, make things go a little faster for him. Because please believe he got down, baby. He got down, okay? He's afraid that people are going to change their opinion of him and people going to start not fucking with him because... I believe there's a sex tape coming, y'all, okay? And you better believe that that sex tape happened, okay? That's why they kept Meek doped up so much, because they needed to break him and get him into a position where he could not, where they could make him an offer that he could not refuse. Money, power, respect, fame, this is all the things that Meek wanted. So while he was driving around shitting on poor people, giving them a dollar or some shit, he might have should have been taking those signs, taking those as signs from the universe, like pay them offerings because you done slept with a demon. So he's worried about his true, not true nature, but he's worried about that freaky shit coming out. He's worried about the fact that, you know, he, he's going to be aligned with the people that did he preyed upon the people that did he knew that he could get over on. Like I said, in Diddy's reading, Diddy targeted Meek because Meek, old poor ass nigga, he ain't got no money. He got fame, but no fucking money. He go to jail. He can't fight this fucking judge. Here's my opportunity to get some ass. So Puff, Meek meets Puff by way I feel through Jay-Z. Jay-Z uh, kind of put that link there. And I told y'all Jay-Z is everything but a fucking homosexual and a pedophile, but he will traffic the fuck out of some humans. And that's basically what he did to Meek. So Meek in all of this legal trouble and he needs some bread. He ain't got no paper to get this shit. In slides Diddy. Diddy get helps, you know, orchestrate some things behind the scene. Let Jay-Z take credit for a boom. Okay, we did da-da-da-da-da to get Meek out of jail. Now Meek is, is beholden upon to Puff. Puff like, what can you do for me in exchange for your freedom? In exchange for this money I'm about to put in your pocket, in exchange for this opportunity I'm about to put you in front of, because see, these four, these white people that I sit with look at you as a nigga. 
So what do what can I do for you to make sure that you're able to sit with these white people and get some more of this money? Meek ain't got no ideas, so Puff, go ahead with what he does. You gonna suck this dick. You gonna assume the, the role of my bitch. You gonna assume the role of this, this effeminate role for me. And you gonna give me that ass when I need it. So that's what Meek did. Meek became his boyfriend. There it is, y'all, with the damn lover's card showing up. And for those of y'all, oh, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it, baby. Please look down at this motherfucking picture real quick. Boys, men don't dress like each other, honey. Even twins don't even do that after a certain age. And the fact that these Negroes have no relation to each other, why are they dressed alike? In this picture, there's a little person. They probably all together, all three of them. This is some sick sexual fantasy that's going on. Y'all know this is all dicks swinging in the room in the back of that picture too now. Y'all see what's going on? Yes, yeah, a dick fest going on. So Meek makes his decision. Here's Puff as the king of wands coming in as his fucking lover. He... This is what y'all mean when y'all went, when this is what I believe they mean, y'all, when they be saying niggas be wearing a dress in Hollywood or wearing a dress in hip hop. This is what I think that's code name for, but we're going to say that for the podcast. So Meek went there and gave his ass up to Puff. And for a long time, this is what it was. I seen a video the other day of Meek hopping around like a fucking bunny for some white men. You know, the man, men standing behind him, filming him as he jumping in place while they looking at his ass bounce up and down. Meek is worried about all of this shit coming out because he allowed these men to videotape him. Not only videotaped him hopping like a bunny, somebody got some footage of him being a bottom honey. Oh, yes. They got some video of him taking several dicks, okay? That Ten of Wands has that phallus energy on it. Please believe that there's a video going to surface or rumors of a video surface of me getting down, baby, in that effeminate position. And he is hoping like hell this shit don't come out. But with the fall of these hip hop titans, you know, those gatekeepers, they got to throw their peons to the wolves. And Meek is worth nothing in this world. Not the world as a living person, but I'm saying in the world of hip hop, he has no value to these fucking gatekeepers. He's a pest. He's somebody that they can use to continue to pollute hip hop or promote the hip hop that they want. But in the background, he's nothing but somebody's bitch. Meek will, Meek is the type of dude or it's going to come out. He's the type of dude that goes gay for pay. Here he is with the Six of Pentacles energy. As long as you are taking care of this man, he will give you some ass. He'll let you teabag him. He'll let white men stand behind him and film him jumping up and down like a fucking coon. He'll do all of that simply to stay out of the hood. Remember I told y'all Diddy targets certain types of people, certain disenfranchised people, certain people who he knows ain't got no money. This is his whole opportunity for everyone that he's dealt with. This is the opportunity he presents all of them. And he does pay well now. And this is the thing with Diddy, yo. He paid Meek well for that ass. Meek bet not say nothing. Meek is part of those group of people that are not going to go against Diddy because he's in way too deep. Diddy has taken care of too much for him. Of course he gonna put his dick in his booty. He probably just stopped fucking him when this shit came out about Cassie. And don't be surprised that there are going to be some more people that are going, you're going to find out more of your favorites because that's what Diddy does. He presents them an opportunity, give them a little bit of bread, take them around some stars, you know, testing your nuts, trying to see if you know what's going to happen. And he does this more with the male artists that he's pursuing because he has no intention on doing anything but stretching your booty hole. That's what Meek allowed him to do. Now, Meek had already got on or whatever, but he needed more of an opportunity because Meek had no bread. He had the fame, but he had no bread. He had no connections. He had no opportunities. So he needed to get on his knees, honey. So now there's the fight going on. You know, did he like, yo, I can't help you with this. You know, they saying the same shit about me. Do I care? It's the whole thing of neither of them identifying as homosexual. That is also behind the five of wands. Not only are there now going to be more people speaking up, 
There are going to be people fighting in the circle because they are too complicit in the shit. It's too many videos of these motherfuckers that are present that can incriminate them and destroy their careers. You know, like in Meek's case, he's like embarrassed because this is going to challenge his manhood. This is going to challenge all that shit he's been saying on the records. You supposed to be this type of nigga, but you sucking dick? Really? You sucking dick for money? You, you're you nothing better than, these, than, than the hoes you disrespect on your albums. And for y'all to say, oh, he ain't did that in a while. That's because Diddy told him to leave with love. See, his boyfriend told him what to do. Now he's embarrassed because his little secret's out. You were in a, a position of playing this 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 effeminate role for Puff, but on the on these albums, you'll play this this hard ass dude. You'll play this this street nigga from Philly. You'll play up that image, but for real, for real, you a fanboy, ain't you? I knew something was up with me, with me that time when he had the motherfucking capris on. I knew something was going on with him. And any nigga that wearing the motherfucking capris, baby, please believe I side eyed you and knew you took some dick at one time too, or at least you thinking about it. So a lot of these niggas getting ready to be careful. They getting ready to scrub a lot of their websites and shit they've been doing, honey, because there is going to be leaks of information coming out. Meek is worried, and so should several other people be because they've laid with Meek. And Ten of Swords show you that Meek was getting his back pressed in, baby. And it got his back pressed in by several of these niggas. Niggas that we think ain't even got that shit going on. Oh, we. I mean, the shit gonna get real active, y'all. And more and more shit gonna come out about Meek in this situation. It's gonna talk about how he is delusional. And, and, and knowing that there is... This is the age of shit being exposed. Why would you let these folk film you in these positions? And he's going to, of course, try to justify it. But I want y'all to go forward knowing that a lot of these dudes in hip hop be, be, be playing with each other's booty holes. OK, the hardest niggas that y'all see on these fucking videos or the ones that's talking the most shit be the ones sucking the most dick. So sorry, Meek getting ready to be the one that's falling victim to it. Here's y'all first gay rapper right here.